And we are live on the patio at Alvarado Street Brewery and Bistro for Pub Talk on the Locals Radio Station for the Monterey Bay. Hey, oh, oh, I'm in a glass case of emotion. Are you? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Constantly. <laughs> Always, all the time. A man. tequila glass full of emotion. Yeah, that's yes, it. Yes, that's that's yeah. what it is. That's that's more important. Uh, Jeff White and Steph Montez with you as we are broadcasting live out here without our good friend Kevin Wright. Thank you. I was going to jump in and interject with Kevin Wright's not here. He's having a procedure done. He'll be okay. <laughs> He's having a procedure it's, done. It's cosmetic. It's and there's right. a whole tree thing going on too with him right now. It's that all I right. I, I can't. I can't understand. He just goes back and forth. You know. I, I gotta say, I love our Instagram chat when it's active. Oh, the three yeah. of us. Because yeah, we send each other some fun things. I, I'm also glad that nobody else is on that show. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Especially the cops. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, we are out here at Alvarado Street, uh, Brewing Bistro in the Carmel Plaza. We'd love for you to come out down here and join us. Grab a Frosty Pint. I mean, your neighbor's doing some great things. That's what it's all about. And we have some other great neighbors with us now. We've got Laura from the Salvador Dali exhibit with us. Welcome to Pub Talk. Thank this, you so this much. This is your first. It is. I'm very, hopefully not the last, though. No. We have lots Lots of good things let's, happening. Let's make sure that doesn't happen. I agree. Yeah. This is the first. Paul, this is not your first, is it? No, I've been here before. I was going to say, <laughs> this is like, you're at least a three-timer, I think, at this point. You can't get rid of me. No, we don't want to. <laughs> so we're we're on the same page here. You guys are doing some really special stuff. I, I, I want to talk about Salvador Dali exhibit in general because... It is an amazing complex that you guys have there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we have over 460 different pieces ranging in, you know, original first edition lithographs that he himself carved in stone. And um, interestingly enough, when he was done making these stone lithographs, he would actually break them so that nobody else could ever make his art again if it wasn't, like, approved by him, which was pretty cool. Um, and we also have a magic club. Aside from that, we have a super cute little 100-seat theater where we have nightly magic shows except for Wednesdays. Pretty fun. Uh, I've heard good things about the magic Yeah, we shows. get we get um, a new performer every two weeks, so it's pretty cool. Uh, I, so uh, my kids have gone, and they think have it's they? the best thing ever, and they it, want to go every I couple agree. weeks. I agree. Like, I think it's the best thing ever. It's like when I go to Disneyland, and it's I'm a... A kid at heart, like don't tell me the secrets. I want to believe that that's yeah. you know Princess Ariel. I'm taking my picture with. I want to believe that you're, you know, poking holes through a mirror. I, I love it. Yeah. So. Uh, and I think that that probably gets approved by uh, Salvador Dali. As oh, 100 percent. <laughs> yeah. A lot of fun. So, um, something cool about our Salvador Dali exhibit too is that we have a rotational gallery upstairs where we feature different local artists. And so this, um, throughout June and July, through the end of July, we're actually featuring over 30 different local queer artists from our community. And the ex exhibition is called Don't Say Straight. I've been working really closely with Paul and Xavier and Gary, who are here with me today. And um, we actually threw this gallery together in a week, believe it or not, like from, from a conception, meeting in an empty room, to full hung paintings. It's pretty amazing. I yeah. don't know how you guys did it. Because, well, and, and we'll give the backdrop, I think, for most people out there are informed, but if you follow politics in America at all, you know that Florida is a cesspool. <laughs> <laughs> and I can say that because yeah. I'm from the East Coast. Sorry, Florida. Like, we like we seriously, like Jacksonville's okay, the keys are great, but the rest, I wish it was all a swamp. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, I'm kidding, though. I do have a lot of great friends with there, but the politics in, in, in particular have been really Absolutely. odd. And this, this whole new bill that, uh, well, yeah, it, it, it falls suit because it's like, we don't believe in vaccines. We don't believe in this. We don't believe that. Also, you can't say gay. Exactly. <laughs> like, what kind of world? Oh, you live in Florida. That's right. Reality doesn't exist there. Yeah. Um, it doesn't apply to you. But I think the best way, rather than to rail against it, because... Frankly, we're, no we're, we're not we're not Florida <laughs> citizens either. Honestly. We can't vote one way or another on that. We, we're in California. We can't do anything with the process of that. But we Light can make a point. We can stoke conversation. And what you guys have done in a hurry Absolutely. is the best rebuttal, I think. And, and, and I, I'm hoping that there's a lot of folks around the country that are following suit from what you guys are doing. We hope so, too, because one thing a lot of people don't realize is Florida started this, but there are now over 300 bills all around the country yep. that are targeting the LGBTQ community. And so our point in putting this exhibit together is to bring visibility and to allow these artists to have a space where they can show their work and speak their mind and their truth when we're trying to be erased from coast to coast it, it's 
we live in a weird universe right now uh, <laughs> yes. between pandemics and politics and everything else. This just comes right in, and it's like, oh, of course, of course, this is going to be a part of it because I thought we had made progress. Right. And some people do not like that. I do oh. think a lot of it is backlash against marriage equality. I think it's Absolutely. been building up since that happened. Um, but, you know, we're still here <laughs> and we're going to fight back. And I think as artists, the best tool we have is our work. And it shows in this exhibit from the 30 plus artists in this community. I believe that's why they were so eager to participate because they wanted to have a voice. They want to speak out. Many of them said this was the first show they've been able to be a part of since COVID. Um, um, and it's a really powerful thing. That's the other aspect of this, right? We, we haven't been able to do things like this the last two years. Yes. It, we finally are able to come together. We're finally able to talk about things face-to-face, -face, not just anonymously on some message board or in social media. This is something like, let's get together. Let's yes. talk about this. And I love the idea of, uh, of addressing an issue that, frankly, just pisses most people with an open mind off, but also uses art. Yeah. Because... You, you've got to be one ornery SOB to hate art. <laughs> you, you know? Well, I know a few. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there there's a lot well, of them. I'm just saying I know. Apparently there's, there's a lot in Florida, apparently. <laughs> yeah. um, but, yeah. but the fact that we can come together and we can use beauty and, and starkness and contrast and, and statements that aren't verbal. They're not... I think the verbal part is what we struggle with a lot of times. People, the backlash that you talked about. The subjective nature of art allows us to put things out there and then, okay, you, you deal with it now. Right. You can reach people who you might not otherwise be able to reach. I'm sure there will be people walking around the Dali Museum just looking at you know work by Dali and stumble into that gallery who might not agree with us. And that's okay. We want that. I don't want to just preach to the choir. I want this work to be seen. We by got, We got to have a discussion, talk. right? Yes. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the exhibit itself. Uh, I, I love the fact that you've incorporated so many artists in this, and I'm guessing that means so many different mediums as well. Yeah, so what's beautiful about this um, exhibit is that there's so many this. different If you're watching artists. on Facebook Live, this is so great right now. <laughs> but yeah, so there's uh, so many different um, artists who participated, and um, it's a, really a collective voice. Um, we're all from different backgrounds, and we all have different pronouns, and um, it's just, it's all one voice. When you go there, you really um, feel the heart of the artists. <laughs> but it's your turn, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to say, um, with growing up in this area, I think it's really important and special to have something like this, where the community can come together and bring artists together. Um, not just artists, but art appreciators and people who enjoy beautiful things. And to have a space where we can all go and collectively be together and show our work and stand for something that's important that makes a big difference and it's very powerful for you being an artist especially being from here i mean when you've got roots in a place things tend to mean a little bit more or at least mean something different what did it mean for you for this exhibit to, to use your art to make a statement in, in your community well and actually um you know by trade i'm in real estate but um <laughs> uh, being involved with uh, my partner who's an artist in paul a good friend and um i feel that this has given us a platform to like you said quietly demonstrate and show where we stand and that's what makes it so powerful because I think that here in this area, not a lot of people want are, can stand up or have a place to go and have their voice be heard, and that's why it's so important here. Well, so we're in s the coastal central California. <laughs> I'm sorry you, not to you, laugh, but it's like, we should not have any issues with this That's at all what I was going to say, so tell us the issues. Like, let's talk about it here. This is, this is what we do on Pup Talk. Okay. You would think that this would be one of the most progressive places that, that you would be encouraged and enabled to be yourself. Yes, you're right. And you, you would think that. And I'm speaking for myself. I feel that um, there are times where I don't feel that, you know, it's as easy to stand up for what I believe in and what I stand for. Um, that's why I feel like art is such a beautiful way to do it for me. There are other people who are much more vocal and political than I am um, in this table also. But for me, I'm... A, not as not as vocal and, and that's okay i mean uh, honestly that's kind of a part of that of accepting everybody for who they are and the gifts and the passions that they have some people have that ability to stand up on a soapbox and call people out mm -hmm. some people are, are are working 
on the background. Some people are is, are supporting in other ways. It, it's a community, right? Uh, but like specific to this community, what are some of the challenges that we hope to address with this exhibit? Um, I'd I'd say. Um I'll, I'll defer this to Paul, but what, um, <laughs> mainly I feel just acceptance and awareness and, and being able to bring people together in one place where we can all kind of share the same ideas. And, I, and you know, that's kind of where I, I feel it is for me. And I would just add, as someone who moved here in 2016 from Ohio, I grew up in an area. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I, I, you can lump that you in got with some Florida. some war stories there, yeah. <laughs> These are North Carolina, so oh, I can't okay. say anything yeah. about that. <laughs> we, we don't need to bring up the bathroom bill. <laughs> we won't Good argue Lord. who had it worse. Yeah. But yeah. No, I, th I do notice a big difference, having lived there most of my life and then moving here. The queer community in Ohio, in some ways, was so much more vocal because they needed to be, right. and because there was so much adversity. And I think living in a place where there is more general acceptance, it's easy to become complacent and also to forget about all of the people all over the country who don't have that luxury, especially the young people who have unsupportive families. I te I'm a teacher also. I teach a lot of art classes online with students all over the country, and I have a lot of queer students who do not have the luxury of even being able to tell their parents who yeah. they really are. So I grew up in, in Gilroy, which is not far from here. Yes. Lived in Los Angeles for about 10 years, San Francisco and Oakland for another five years. It taught me everything I needed to know. Like yes. I learned so much about acceptance, about uh, my folks are my folks. I'll go to war for them. Like, uh -huh. and it doesn't matter if you're a direct, you know what I mean? Like someone that has a direct, connection to me yes. I know who you are just by association kind of thing mm -hmm. so it's so strange like to come here I'm like okay I moved here about 10 years ago thinking this is <laughs> right by Big Sur come on like yes. we gotta just be and I'm so surprised where are the gays that's what I thought when well, I no, I, <laughs> but not only that it was just like you know one of the things that I face personally in going into I, this is totally off topic but on topic go ahead this morning, I'm like looking at this this conference Jeff and I usually attend. I'm looking at who's going to be at the, the conference. I'm like, there's no brown people, there's right. no black people, mm -hmm. there's no gay people. Yeah. There's no, like it's just well, a very, on the third that you know of that I know of. Yeah. Right. Just on what's I, which I'm like, also look, speaks to a different problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It does, and I'm like, that's not inclusivity. No. That's not thinking about everybody around here. And that was the lesson I learned when I moved here. It was like yes. inclusivity. It's not. There's not an in inert uh, uh, prejudice, but this is not inclusive. Well, it's not just be like, come on, join us, let's go. <laughs> I, let's I will say too, e even moving from North Carolina, when I moved here, I realized that this place is is the most myopic provincial place that I've ever lived in my life, and I lived on an island for almost three years. <laughs> right? Where they don't even speak like, English. Literally lived on an island. <laughs> like, and, and I was just, I couldn't believe it. I was like. Wow, I just thought when I moved to Central California that people would embrace change and progress. The irony, too, about the Monterey Bay is to the north, you know, we're here in Carmel. Right. Santa Cruz, tip of my hat, y'all. <laughs> you guys embrace things. You guys are like, yeah, we want to try that new beer. Yeah, we, we accept this, this, this lifestyle. Yes, we, it's yes, yes, yes. Whereas down here on the peninsula, it's often eh or no. Right. And 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 I don't it's, I don't necessarily know I the make genesis money of that. Off it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I would love to. I don't even understand the genesis of it enough to address the issue because I, I'm not. I don't want to be here point at fingers at people that I don't even know their faces. I'm not trying to do that. So if you're listening here, I'm I, I'm not trying to call you out, but I am trying to understand this culture. And I've been here now for 13 years, and I'm still trying to put together the pieces of this puzzle mm -hmm. because. It doesn't make sense to me. But it's also not just here. And to your point, I remember when I came out, and I was 22 when I came out. I mean, how could anybody not know looking at me? But anyhow, I came out when I was 22, and all of the images that I saw in queer media were people who looked like me. They were white, cisgender, blonde, skinny, gay men. 
And it didn't even occur to me at that time, what would it feel like to be a part of this community and not see myself represented? And so that's been a learning curve for me. And that's one of the things I'm really proud about this show is the diversity of the artists who are included. It's representing all of the different points on the rainbow. And, and that's important too. We can't just assume that, you know, because I'm a, I'm a gay person that I speak for everyone because everyone's experiences are different. Representation's the most important thing that we can give each other, honestly. Well, <laughs> and, and, and it goes back to do that no matter what group you are in by other people's definition or what you identify with, you are one. Yeah, you're, like, and you're one of you're one of heard. many, and and, Everybody. and nobody is the judge here. Like yeah. that, I think that's often that's the crux of the whole situation. And I mean, taking that a, a little bit further, that we're all when you walk into this "Don't Say Straight" exhibit at the Dolly Museum, you wouldn't initially realize that there are over thirty different artists. Everything is so cohesive. Everything is very just togetherness and what? empowering and. We, we just recognized a need in the community that was filled with this exhibit, and it's just amazing. I, I can't wait to I check cried, it out. I cried so much yeah. during this I can't wait to check it out. Because I think a that. lot of art in general is reactionary, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And so to see that there is cohesiveness, like you said, to mm -hmm. see that there is a common thread is because of that 100%. That, impact, that reaction. Yes. Yeah. Cool. I can't and wait to check it out. And for anyone interested in joining us, we are having an artist reception for the Don't Stay Straight exhibition. It is on the 13th of July, so. Which I, I can't believe is not that far away. It's not, it's gonna sneak up fast from seven to 9.30. Tickets are available um, at salvadordollyexpo.tixr.com slash DSS. Give that again, because that was a little mouthful. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's okay, but just we give it again gonna, for all the yeah, listeners. Yeah, if you would like to join our artist reception for the Don't Stay Straight, you can find tickets at Salvador Dolly Expo dot T I X R dot com slash D S S. I would also advise people to follow you guys on Instagram, Facebook, and and go to the go to the webpage. Absolutely, yeah. So on Instagram we're a little tricky, but we're there. It's M H A A Salvador Dolly. M H A A. Okay. M H A A. Yeah. All right. So Monterey Historical Art Association. Art, Art Association. Okay, there we go. And this this is Figured this last little thing. This goes out to my uh, everybody, period. Like my black, brown, queer folks, my disabled folks. Inclusivity is what we need here. And like, period. Yeah, absolutely. The more we and talk, the, the more we realize we're yeah. all the same. We're absolutely. it's pretty simple. Hell yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Of course. Thanks Thank for all having you guys. Us. Can't yeah. wait to see the exhibit. Anytime. All right. Thanks well, again for coming through, on. Through the 31st of July. Yeah. <laughs> so hustle Because yeah. that, that 31st is going to be done right. before and we know we're it. Gonna, hustle We're going to have our next local artist in. Um, I can't spill the beans just yet on who that is. But Ooh, well, I guess we got to get you back on Pub Talk. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much for coming on. Appreciate it. Uh -huh. We're broadcasting live out here on the patio at Alvarado Street Brewery and Bistro. Uh, we still got some more left, so come on down and grab a Frosty Pint. Me, your neighbor's doing some great things here on the Locals Radio Station for the Monterey Bay. Yeah.